I looked at a scripture about the Last Supper, and um, which is Jesus eating a meal, um, breaking bread with his disciples. We had communion this morning, so we had a little talk about that. I'm just going to read Luke 22, 7 to 13. Uh, you don't have to look for it if you don't want to. Luke 22, uh, verse 7 says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There make ready. So they went and found it, just as he has said to them. And they prepared the Passover. So I read this, sort of thinking, well, Easter's coming up. And um, I saw ten very interesting points in this. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, First of all, these two disciples, Peter and John, are sent by Jesus. He says, go. Go and prepare the Passover meal, and they were all going to eat something. Jesus says to them, go and prepare a meal for us. And I was thinking about us. You know, every one of us is sent by Jesus. He says to us, go. Go and prepare so that we are ready for the meal that we will eat with him in the kingdom to come. Amen? Two commands that Jesus gives us for the heavenly kingdom to prepare ourselves for that. He says, go and prepare. So that was the first point. The second point, the disciples say, where? Where do we um, prepare the Passover? And a lot of the time we say things like that to the Lord, don't we? What am I doing, Lord? Where am I supposed to be going? What have I got to do? What is the way you want me to take, Lord? Where do I, how do I find my way? None of us knows which path to take in life. Um, so we have to ask the Lord to show us the way. And as we see, he tells the, gospel, the disciples in a slightly convoluted manner. We'll read that in a little while. So point two is... None of us knows which point, which path to take. We all have to ask the Lord, where do I go, Lord? And he reveals our way to us. The third point, Jesus says to them, follow a man with a pitcher of water. Now, apparently, that was quite unusual for Jerusalem, for a man to be carrying water. It was usually something that the women did. So the disciples would have had no problem finding this man um, carrying the water. Do you know what? I believe that this is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Very often in scripture, you find a story with an unnamed man in it who guides or leads or who does something like that. And that's often a picture of the Holy Spirit. This man leads the way with the water. Other stories in scriptures with an unnamed man were Abraham's servant, who at that time, we don't know his name, and he goes and finds the bride. He brings the bride to um, Isaac. And also Joseph met an unknown man in the field who guided him to his brothers. So a lot of the time it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. The disciples are told to follow a man with a pitcher of water, and, and we follow the Holy Spirit. We're led by him. The Holy Spirit is the one with the water, amen? The scripture says that out of our belly will flow rivers of living water, which he spoke of the Spirit. Um, We follow the one with the water of life. Amen. The fourth point, this man leads them. And the scripture says that the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. He leads us on this journey in life. Jesus calls him the spirit of truth and the world cannot accept him because it can't see him and doesn't know him. And I thought it was quite interesting that only Peter and John are looking for a man with a pitcher of water. Nobody else in Jerusalem at that time is. They wouldn't have thought it was unusual to see a woman carrying water. But Peter and John are looking for something different. They're looking for a man carrying the water and they follow him. Jesus said, the world neither sees him nor knows him. He was, this man was of no relevance to anybody else in Jerusalem. But we are the ones who, who follow the Lord 
the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting that just two disciples are chosen to follow him. The fifth point, finally, this man enters a house and the disciples meet the master of the house. Do you know, I believe that the Holy Spirit leads us to our heavenly home and there we meet the master, we meet our father. He takes them into the house um, once they followed him and there they meet the master, God our father, the master of the house, the kingdom of God. If we follow the Holy Spirit, we will be the ones received by God in our heavenly home. Number six, the master shows them to a large furnished upper room. Those are the words that are used. Interesting, isn't it, that this room is already furnished. It's already made, prepared. Jesus said to us, I go and prepare a place for you. It's already prepared. Now, when you read this and you have a, do a little bit of study, the commentaries suggest that Jesus knew the master of this house. That's what they say. And he had already arranged with him to have the Passover there. He'd planned it all out, unbeknown to the disciples. He already arranged the room with the master of the house, so it was prepared for them. You know, we are told that uh, we have a place in heaven for us. Jesus says, I'm going now so that I can prepare a place for you. When we get to heaven, it's prepared for us. We have a place ready. Point seven, it was an upper room, which is quite interesting. And I think that's a picture of our heavenly home. A large furnished upper room. Picture of uh, our mansion in the sky, we might say. That used to be a famous uh, Sunday school song, isn't it? I'm going um, to on a train to the mansion in the sky. That's, I think, what it was called. Previously arranged and prepared for us by Jesus and the Father. Uh, he's gone ahead of us. And we are led to this home by the Holy Spirit. He takes us there. Verse 8. In this upper room, we sit down to eat and share fellowship with the Lord and with other believers. When we finally get to our heavenly home, we will be able to sit down and rejoice and share in the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's two other points. Um, I don't know if you noticed it when we read it, but it's all kind of done in a rather secretive manner. It's a sort of bit of cloak and dagger stuff. Jesus doesn't say, all right, just go down this road, turn left, come to number 42, you know, and that's, you know, go upstairs. He says, follow a man with a pitcher of water. Why did he say that? He knew where they were going. Well, one reason could be is that they have an enemy that is quite nearby. Judas uh, is waiting for an opportunity to betray Christ. And, you know, it's suggested that um, Jesus doesn't make it very obvious where he's going to have the, uh, the Passover meal because he doesn't want the enemy to have an attack and to bring the soldiers and arrest him. He wanted to spend that time with his disciples. He said, I've, I've desired to have this meal with you. So he kind of kept it a little bit quiet because of their enemy. In verse 3, it said, Satan had already entered into Jesus. So he was definitely looking for an opportunity to arrest him. Jesus wanted to enjoy that time. And he doesn't reveal everything to us. We never know that. Most of the time when we say, Lord, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? He says, just trust me. And we feel a bit frustrated and perhaps even a little bit annoyed that he won't you know, trust us and tell us. But maybe it's because we have an enemy who's watching and waiting and uh, just would love an opportunity to trip us up. Number 10, Jesus only chose two disciples to go on this mission. The scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. It's the remnant who follow the Holy Spirit that find their way to the heavenly home. Amen. Those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit says. That's what Jesus says in Revelation. If you've got an ear to hear the Spirit, if you're following him, if you're willing to be led by him, then we will make it to the, our heavenly home. And he also says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. We need to be following. We need to be obedient. 
So I thought this was quite an interesting scripture just to sort of have a quick read of and think, what can I do? We were doing communion this morning and I, I read this out to people. And, you know, we do communion every month and sometimes it's quite difficult to find a, something different to say, you know, to make people think about it in a different way. But I thought that was interesting. We are sent by Jesus who says, go and prepare. We are led by the Holy Spirit who has the water of life. We are received by the Father into our heavenly home where we can sit down and eat um, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I uh, just thought I'd share that with you.